everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So about a month or so ago I started this new series in which I pick a ship and then I go through and analyze their whole timeline together. So last time we did Gaston and Nina from Soy Luna and so today we're going to be doing Starco from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. And I don't know why but for some reason I just like assumed that Starco would be a lot easier than Gastina, probably just because like Soy Luna has a lot more episodes than Star does and so I was like cool Starco piece of cake. Um, a spoiler alert it was not a piece of cake. I actually like I don't think you guys can see because it's basically gone now but a couple days ago I woke up with this dye and I was just convinced that like it was because of the stress from this video like I know they're usually from like hormones or bacteria or whatever but I'm like nah Starco is to blame for this but obviously Star is a very different show in comparison to Soy Luna like for one it's a lot less linear than Luna is the show kind of follows more of a sitcom format in the beginning and the fact that a lot of the episodes could be standalone episodes but then it's also like but they're not though like I still feel like everything is connected in this show all of this is to say that I worked very hard on this video and obviously I'm not going to get the chance to cover every single little detail but I will try my absolute hardest to cover the main events. And this video really did get me right back into my Starco obsession which I am thankful for because I miss these two so much and so I'm hoping that it has the same effect on all of you. Um, and yeah as always feel free to recommend a ship you'd like me to cover next time. It doesn't have to be from Disney um, but fair warning I'll probably end up just doing whatever I want because it's the ships that I love that make me want to make content about. Uh, anyways with all that being said let's jump right into chapter one. Alright, so chapter one we're calling Love at First Fight because I thought that that was a very clever name. You know, there's duality to it. You got the fact that when they first met they were kind of not on the best terms and then also the fact that they didn't really start bonding until they fought off all the monsters together for the first time. And so, you know, I love a good double meaning. So Star and Marco meet in the first episode after Marco was chosen to show Star around the school. She is this new student who just transferred there, but Marco soon comes to realize that she did not just transfer from another high school but another dimension instead and she can also do magic. And so Marco is immediately put off by the chaos that Star brings and so he dips, he goes home, only to find out that she is also going to be living with him as well. And so he is not too thrilled by this, especially after he sees her transform her room and it looks so cool and big and he's like, damn, I wish my room was like that, which leads her to casting a spell that sucks his room into a giant black hole. And so in the attempt to make him feel better, Star does this spell to like brighten up his day, but then it ends up putting a rain cloud over his head and so Marco just dips again, he just can't handle this. So Star feels really bad about all of this and so she goes to Marco to apologize and she's just like, you know what, don't worry about me, I'll go find another host family to live with, but then that is when they are interrupted by Ludo and his gang of monsters. And Marco's immediate reaction, even though he's acted like he doesn't like her this entire episode and she is the one with magic, is to stand in front of her and fight off the monster that's coming at her. And I just, I love that little detail, it was something that I didn't notice until my most recent rewatch and so I just had to point it out. So they go on to fight off Ludo's monsters together and realize that they make a really great team and all of this leads to Marco saying that he doesn't want Star to leave and then they hug. Wait, I don't want you to go, I want you to stay with us. Really? And so I think it's in this moment, even if he doesn't know it yet, that Marco falls in love with her, which is later confirmed by the end of the show. But nonetheless, let's move on to chapter two. So chapter two is called Building the Foundation because that's really what season one was all about. We get to see their friendship developing in the first season and there are just so many great moments where they're just constantly looking out for one another and I just would love to cover them all. But obviously for the sake of time, we're not gonna be able to do that. And so instead we're just gonna be covering the most memorable moments according to me. So let's start off with the monster arm episode, which I know is notorious for being an episode that all of the fans hate, but I do still think it is a pretty decent Starco episode, just in the fact that Marco even trusts Star enough to fix his arm to begin with. I mean, should he have pressured her into doing this spell when she already told him that she wasn't comfortable doing it? No, obviously not, but that was the whole point of the episode and that was the whole lesson that he learned in the end. But we also get to see just how much Star cares about him in this episode, just in the fact that she stays up all night trying to fix it and then still comes to his karate thing the next day after running off of no sleep. And then we have the exchange student episode, which isn't really that relevant in the grand scheme of things but we do get Marco calling out Star for being jealous and then him saying at the end of the episode that she is his favorite student that they've had live with them. Moving on to Cheer Up Star which has got to be one of my favorite episodes in this entire season because it's the one where Marco is just having a terrible day and so Star does everything she can to try to make him feel better and then when the tables turn Marco does the same thing and then he also ends up saying this. I guess I'm just not cool enough for a guy with a record. Are you kidding? You're the coolest girl I know. They also hug in this episode and then end up getting stuck together because Marco is covered in maple syrup and will I be covering every single hug that they have in this show? Uh, no, probably not. They do hug a lot, but I will definitely be covering the main ones of importance according to me. Moving on to episode 5, now this is the episode where Marco goes to Muni for the first time and there's this one moment where Marco is calming down Star in the pig goat pen area. Now, this could just be a coincidence, but I feel like this has to be a reference to their kiss at the end of the show. Like, there's no way that they would do something like that unintentionally. Now this brings us to Muberty, which is a fan favorite as it should be, and so 
obviously there is that one moment in the episode where Star is like, wait a second, Marco's a boy, which is great, 10 out of 10. But I also love the line in the beginning of the episode where Marco was like, well, looks like you got another heart. I don't know what it is about that, but I just love the line delivery there. Marco, this is not paint. Well, looks like you got another heart. But yeah, this whole episode, Marco is just trying his very best to help out Star, which I just think is adorable. And then we also get this really great hug in the end. Star! Uh, you came back! Then we find out that Marco has been keeping track of how many times Star has saved him, and we have this whole episode of him trying to save her for once, even though he's already done so numerous times in the past, it just hasn't really been what maybe in what he would define as being saved? I don't know. But all this leads to the end of the episode where they share this really great moment on the roof where Star is like, none of that really matters. All that matters is that we have each other's backs. So this brings us to, that's right, you guessed it, the Blood Moon Ball. And so basically Star gets invited to this ball by her demon ex-boyfriend Tom. And so this results in Marco just having a time throughout the entire episode because he really doesn't want her to go. And then we also get this reaction from him after he sees her dressed up for the first time. What do you think? You look amazing. Marco! Don't go! I'm totally going! And so this leads to Star going to the ball and Marco just chilling in her room beside himself until he finally decides to go to the ball and try to get her to leave. And so this results in them dancing together under the light of the blood moon which apparently bonds their souls together for all eternity. But also can we just talk about the fact that Star was just completely enamored with him when they first started dancing because that was just everything to me and I will never be over it. But this brings us to the end of the episode where they get in a bit of a fight because Star is frustrated with Marco for not trusting her but then we also end up getting this really cute moment. Well, it wasn't a total disaster. Now I know you can dance. <laughs> Hat hair. hair. Whoa! Whoa we, we both, both said, said the, the same, same thing. thing. Okay, okay, stop that. that. All right, so the finale. So Marco is captured by Toffee, went went, um, and so this results in Star having to give up her wand to save him because they are so in love, um, and they also hug. Oh, and I also really like the moment where Star like kicks him back into the box. I don't know why, but I like that moment as well. So there we go. The foundation for their friendship is now set, which means we can get into the romantic plot more directly now, which is exactly what they do in season two. So on to chapter three. So chapter three is just friends, but with undertones for obvious reasons. So first of all, I just had to point out the fact that Star just like apparently chills in the bathroom while Marco showers because that's chill. All right, sounds good. But that's not the only notable thing about the start of the season as it is also the Closet of Secrets episode in which Star has to dig deep down to use magic without her wand to get Marco out of the closet. And she's not able to do this until Marco finds her journal and starts reading a section titled My Thoughts on Marco. And you might be thinking, man, it sucks that we never actually got to find out what she wrote in there, but we actually do, because I have this, which is the Magic Book of Spells that was released a few years ago. And in the back of the book, we have a section that was taken out of her journal and put into the spell book. Look familiar? That's right. It's her thoughts on Marco from that episode. Um, you can pause it if you want to read it here. I'll show you the other pages as well. To do a quick summary, basically, she does not say that she has a crush on him. Sorry to burst your bubble if that's anyone's headcanon. Um, she basically just says that she kind of like plays up being sort of like clueless in terms of like earth things and stuff like that just because she knows that it's like good for Marco to help her out because then it helps him like embrace the chaos that is around them. She also calls him cute and says that she's never like had this connection with anyone before but then also says like that doesn't mean that I have a crush on him like don't worry I just think he's really cute and he's a great dancer and so it's like kind of hinting at that but not really. Maybe that's why she didn't want him to read it but I feel like it was probably more the fact that she says that she kind of plays up not knowing things for him but I don't know maybe just like the thought of like even just putting like having a crush out there into the universe in this journal was something she didn't want him to read. At first I was like kind of mad by this book because I was like, mm, no, my head canon is that she wrote down that she has a crush on him. But then I was like, wait, no, because I don't actually think she was aware of her crush at this point in time. And so if she wrote that down, it would not make sense. Anyways, moving on to episode two in which we got this scene. The thing is, Star and I have recently become smooch buddies on the lips. Even if that's true, kid, you shouldn't say that out loud. Yeah, we've been trying all styles. German, Italian, Polynesian. My tonsils are so tired. I can't feel my teeth. 
Now was Marco just saying all of that to expose Tom? Yes, but I still love that scene just with my whole heart. If you need a refresher, basically Tom is trying to get the tea, if you will, as to if Marco and Star are a thing or not because, well, he saw their souls get bonded together and also because he wants to get back together with Star. But then he goes about it the wrong way and so this was Marco's way of catching him in the act, sort of speak. But because of Tom's actions in this episode, Star ends up having this whole mental breakdown, which is just on the list of one of the many reasons as to why I do not ship Tom and Star. And also on that list is how at the end of this episode, even though Tom is the one who caused this whole mess, Marco is the one that knows what to say to make Star feel better because they're in love. Moving on to the next episode, Marco teaches Star how to ride a bike because they are just couple goals and they also share a cute hug in that episode as well. In episode 5, the Diaz family goes camping and Star's dad shows up and thinks that Marco is her boyfriend the entire time. But then this brings us to the sleepover episode in which Star is having a sleepover with her friends. They all decide to play truth or punishment and Marco joins in on this and then the last question is asking them who they all have a crush on and then the cube says that someone lied. Then by the end of the episode we find out that it was Star. Star Butterfly has a crush on and so now it's been revealed to the audience that Star has a crush on Marco. However, it is still unclear as to if Star is aware of these feelings or not. And I say this because of what she says in the cube to get them all out about how sometimes you don't know what you think or feel because those feelings are constantly changing and sometimes they just don't align. And so yeah, Star does have a crush on Marco at this point, but I just personally don't think she's aware of it yet. Or she is aware of it, but she's still choosing to deny it. Anyways, in the second half of this episode, they share one of my favorite hugs. And so let's watch that. Let's hug. So when they find our charred skeletons, They'll know we were friends. And then to wrap up this chapter, we have a moment in 13B where Marco thinks that Jackie's drawing of a watermelon is the moon. Now, maybe this was just Marco being dumb and just forgetting what color the moon is, but it could also be something related to the blood moon and the curse, maybe, possibly. Um, it could also just be me reading way too much into things. That is also very possible. Uh, anyways, let's move on. Moving on to chapter four, which I'm calling Star Butterfly is in love with her best friend because that's what this chapter is really all about. Starting off with Bon Bon the birthday clown. That's right, we're jumping right into it. So of course I had to start off with pointing out the fact that Star was originally going to go to the dance with Marco until Jackie asks him and she makes plans with Jana. And then I just feel like the rest of this episode or at least the first half is just a complete mirror to the Blood Moon Ball episode. Because first we have Star's reaction to seeing Marco dressed up for the first time. Then we have her stressing just all night over Marco and his date to the point where she does something to sabotage it just like Marco did. And you could blame the blood moon for all of this as it was present the entire episode, but Marco did all of these things as well before the curse even became a thing. And so I don't really think the blood moon has anything to do with this. Um, and I also don't really think it has anything to do with them because I don't actually think the curse had any power over them because they were already in love before the curse happened. Um, but we'll talk more about that later. Anyways, back to Bon Bon. So this episode ends with Marco coming and with the help of Jackie and Jana, they save Star from getting sucked into a black hole and then they hug while Star cries. And so this brings us to 16B in which we have the first introduction of adult Marco. Now, is it a little bit messed up that he is now like 30 years old in another dimension? Yes, 100%. However, we also ended up getting this reaction from Star, which was just 10 out of 10. <laughs> Unhand me, beautiful stranger. How do you know my name? It's me, Marco. See? Marco? Marco. Oh man, we have so much to catch up on. I've learned how to sword fight. Ooh. I fought an army of wolf bears. <sighs> I rode a balloon. And then I jet skied off a waterfall. There's also the fact that he's been gone for so long and been through so much, but he still ends up going back to Earth for Star. And I mean, probably also for like his other friends and family, but like mainly Star, let's be honest. On to episode 20, as I love to cause myself pain, as it is the love sentence episode. So there's a lot to unpack with this episode. We first have Star trying to like overcompensate being cool about Marco's relationship with Jackie. And then you also have Marco stressing over the fear that spending time with both Jackie and Star will make Jackie realize that she likes Star more than him, or not that she likes her more than him but that she thinks that star is cooler but i mean it was confirmed that jackie was bi by the end of the show so i'm pretty sure he was probably more worried about her having a crush on star instead of him i don't want to talk about this next part but <laughs> the episode ends with them all like dancing at the concert having a good time and star looks over and sees jackie and marco making out um and why everyone decides to start like sucking face during the song about being just friends is like beyond me but that was a thing that happened. So this results in Star leaving and Marco running after her, but she reassures him that she's fine. And so he goes back to suck in face with his girlfriend. Star leaves the concert and ends up blowing up a billboard on her way out. So I think it's safe to say that Star is now aware of her feelings for Marco and she just really does not know how to handle them. So this brings us to probably my favorite episode in the series, which is episode 21. So Star is to get this princess song written about her. And
and she is not too thrilled about this. She doesn't want just like some fake puff piece made about her, she wants the people to actually get to know who she really is and the song still agrees and so after studying her for like a day or so he realizes that she's in love with Marco because I mean who wouldn't after getting to see this in person? It's okay Star, everyone knows you're anything but ordinary. Aww, thanks Marco. Hugs. He's uh, he's staring at us isn't he? Yep. Ugh, <sighs> fine. And so he reveals to everyone in the crowd, including Marco, that she is in love with him through song. And I'm not too sure if I can actually play any of it because of like copyright and such, because it's a song, but maybe I can just play my favorite line because I love it. So I'll try that. If not, on to whatever I'm gonna say next. Star Butterfly is in love with her best friend. And his name is Marco Diaz. And so now obviously things have just become really weird between the two of them. They're basically just avoiding one another and every time they do talk it's just super awkward. This reveal has really done a doozy on Marco to the point where during their big like end of the year school party he's just like chilling outside staring at his house in the darkness. But then the romantic plot gets interrupted by Moon coming and telling Star that Toffee is back and so they gotta go. And so in the rush of leaving and the fear of never seeing Marco again, Star runs downstairs and quickly tells Marco in front of everybody that she does have a crush on him even though she just previously denied it. Marco I don't know how to tell you this because you're my best friend. Star? And that makes this super weird because... What's wrong? Because I... I... I do have a crush on you. <gasps> Who called it? I called it! Boom! I called it. I didn't want to admit it because I know you don't feel the same way. And I thought if I just pretended the feelings weren't there, they'd go away. But they haven't. I have to leave Earth probably forever, and I couldn't go without telling you the truth. Uh... I, uh... Goodbye! Goodbye, everyone! Star! <laughs> hey! What do you mean? <gasps> Star? And so Marco runs after her because he's in love, um, but she's already, it's too late. She's already gone. Um, the credits roll, and then that's it. That's how it ends. It's just one of the best finales I've ever seen in my entire life. All right, chapter five is called Things Are Different Now because they are. And not just because Star confessed her feelings, but also because she left, which has just resulted in Marco going through this like downward spiral. The dude becomes very depressed to the point where he forgets about the fact that he has dimensional scissors and could just go to Muni and look for her because I don't know, he just, he needs to be sad for a bit and we're gonna let him. And then you have Star who is going through a lot, but still has time to spy on Marco, calling him a cute idiot and also wearing his hoodie around her neck, even though it smells bad. And then finally, Marco comes to his senses, uses his dimensional scissors to go to Muni, bringing along Star's favorite cereal that you can only get on Earth because, like I mentioned earlier, the boy's in love. So obviously a lot is going on in Muni right now, so it takes a while for the two of them to be reunited. But when they are, it is just perfection and they share one of, if not the best hugs out of the entire series. I can't believe you're here. I was thinking we'd maybe never see each other. Star, your horns are poking me. Take them off. But all this leads to Star getting trapped in the magic and Toffee telling them that she's gone, which results in Marco punching him straight through the chest. Love that guy. Um, as like, I love Marco, not Toffee. I mean, he's fine, but I also like don't really get the hype that much. And then the boy goes and sits with Queen Moon and tries to put her wand back together piece by piece in hopes of bringing her back. And I just, that moment kills me. And like, obviously like she does come back because of her own abilities, but just like the fact that Marco was willing to do that, it just gets me. Like they are so in love. All right, moving on. <laughs> so now that Toffee is no longer a threat to Muni because he's dead, uh, Marco decides to stay there for the summer. They have a great time, but then when fall comes back around, he's got to go back to Earth and they share this really good goodbye. Wait, Marco. I need a longer goodbye than that. Me too. So Marco is gone now, which makes Star sad, but at least she still has his hoodie up until Ponyhead throws it in the wash and then she goes crazy trying to get it back. And then we learn this great lesson in the end. You don't need to hold on to those stinky hoodies anymore. You know why? Cause like what we have learned is that Earth turned scent is like in your heart or whatever. Thanks Ponyhead. <laughs> and so Star sends the hoodie back to Marco and his reaction is just, it's so good. I just, I have to include it. <gasps> All right, my hoodie. Hey, kind of smells like Star. 
And then we go one step forward and two steps back when Jackie breaks up with Marco and he goes back to Muni, uh, but then Star gets back together with Tom. Wah, wah. So Star is like not happy about Marco just like showing up unannounced, probably because she's like trying to get over him. And so she goes and vents to Eclipsa about this and says that she's like totally over him, does not feel that way anymore, or at least we think, or does she? I don't know, on to chapter six. All right, time for a little turning of the tables as chapter six is called Marco Diaz is in love with his best friend as he is. He's just taken a sweet time and realizing it. So let's start with the whole sleep portaling thing. So basically Star has been transforming into her butterfly form every night and creating portals across the universe in search of like this noise that she's been hearing. And so she gets Marco to help her out with this. So the first thing they do is have him watch her sleep for that night, which she prefaces by saying like, don't tell Tom about this. And then the second thing they try is having him chain her to the bed. But then none of these things work. And so Star decides with the help of Eclipsa to just let this all play out and see what she she's searching for. She tells Marco to just like go to bed and just leave her be. She'll figure this out on her own and stuff. But then we have this really great scene where he comes in anyways and waits for her to get back after she's done like her sleep portaling thing and it's just one of the best scenes. I love it so much. But let's put a pause on that storyline for a sec because something big happens in the second half of this episode in which Tad calls out Marco for having feelings for Star and his sparkly eyes confirm it. Oh Marco. 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 Ah. Shh. I've been watching you all night. You have feelings for your best friend, dude. What? No. 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 Dude, you have dimensional scissors. You could be knocking back soda pops and crushing pizzas in any dimension. And you're choosing to live with your unavailable crush? When it comes to making yourself miserable, you are the master, bro. No. No, 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 oh, no, 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 hey Marco, no. you okay? No. Buddy? No. But back to the sleep portaling thing. So now Star is really close to getting to what she's looking for, but she needs the help of Jana and Marco to like make sure she doesn't die when she's searching for this thing. And so things are going good up until they lose connection with Star and Marco freaks out and uses her wand to try to figure out where she is. And then when she does come back, they hug and he blushes because like I've been saying all along, he is in love. The boy is in love with his best friend and her name is Star Butterfly. And then we honestly don't really get that many moments from them for a while because you know, Star is dating Tom, but we do get this really great moment where Marco plans a surprise birthday party for her and then he calls out Tom for forgetting about her birthday. Well, at least I wanted to throw Star a party. You didn't plan anything. And you're supposed to be her boyfriend. And then we also have the episode where Star shows that she knows Marco even better than his own parents. And then they hug and it's just, it's a great moment. But all of this leads to the episode that just truly changed my life, which is of course, Booth Buddies. And I'm sure we all know the plot of this episode off by heart, but basically Star forces Marco to take photos with her in the photo booth. And she's getting frustrated because she can tell that he's not acting the way that he used to when they would take photos together. And so this leads Marco to confess that that is because those photos were taken before she told him that she liked him. And he says that ever since then he's felt differently. And then we get this moment weird question but what do your guts feel like my guts yeah my guts were all like <laughs> you know uh my guts are more like <laughs> <laughs> well they do feel better after you talk about it yeah i guess last photo anything you need to tell me no but there's one last thing i need to do what's that Take the photo the booth is waiting for. Go get him, Tiger. And then they kiss. Um, and then they both freak out because, you know, Star is dating Tom and Marco thought that the booth was magic, which like, to be fair, they weren't able to get out of the booth until they did kiss. And so like, he wasn't really wrong. Like he was just doing what he thought we was supposed to do to get them out, which like, good job. I'm very happy that you did that, Marco. And then in true Starco fashion, they just don't talk about this for a while, but we do get some great moments with uh, Marco telling Tom about it, which I just love. And so this brings us to the finale in which we don't really get that much Starco, to be honest, besides like what I mentioned about Marco and Tom. And then, oh, also they have this really great hug. Marco? Marco? Huh? Star? What happened? I got you, Marco Diaz! So that's the end of season three, and I guess it would also kind of be important to note the fact that Star literally abandons her kingdom, which is currently under attack, in the attempt to go and save Marco. And so I guess it's a good thing that this girl never became queen for more than like three days, because uh, yeah, she clearly has her priorities straight. And so let's move on to the next chapter. 
So season four starts off with a bang, which includes Star going full on Violetta mode as she almost falls out the window trying to save the beach day photo and Marco has to pull her back in. And then we later find out that that photo is actually from the future and was given to her by her future self through Father Time to help her get through some of the hard stuff that's ahead. Then we see more of Star being in love with adult Marco in episode four, and I guess also find out that she's not straight, which is really cool. And then we don't get much of them for a bit because, you know, Star is still with Tom and Marco's got this like breakup buddies thing going on with Kelly, um, but it's all worth the wait because then we get the Curse of the Blood Moon episode. So apparently Starko has been like just meeting for secret serial dates at midnight and also apparently Marco has been going to Eclipsa to talk about his feelings for Star. And so when Marco finds Star's leftover cereal, Marshmallow is just like too adorable to handle, he goes to Eclipsa for help. She paired them up so they wouldn't be lonely. It's so adorable. It's making my guts go... And then I get warm. And, and then... I, I sweat. I, I sweat a lot. Ew. And then my, my eyes have been welling up a little. Every time I think I'm over her and I like someone else, I get marshmallows. So he decides that he's just got to tell Star how he feels and just rip that bandaid off. But then she calls in Tom to join the conversation because she's oblivious. And also Jan is there because she's just enjoying the show. And so he tries his best to explain the whole cereal marshmallow thing. But then him and Star end up doing that creepy synchronization talking thing again that we haven't seen since like the Blood Moon Ball episode. And so Marco is just like, I like every single thing about you. It's unnatural and I don't know how to make it stop. And Tom's just like, nah. It's not unnatural, it's supernatural. You are, guys are cursed. Sorry, I didn't tell you earlier. And so this is when Tom reveals that he has known about this all along and he's been keeping the secret from her for like over a year. Um, and he also reveals that he also knows about her feelings for Marco, which is just so messed up. Like, dude, why are you even dating her? But you know you have feelings for Marco. I know you have feelings for Marco. I mean, where did you think that came from? You have feelings for me? Because of the curse! Star, I'm sorry. And so they all decide to go together to try to get rid of this curse, but I also just have to point out just how disappointed Marco was to find out that it all was because of a curse and how he just has a hard time believing that it was all because of that because the boy's in love and he knows it. And so they go to this stone that's supposed to sever their souls from one another and we find out that to do this, they have to sacrifice the memory of when they first fell in love. And so they assume that that is when they dance together at the ball. And so the stone brings them back into that memory and they share one of the best moments in the entire series, if you ask me. Marco, I'm really scared. Don't worry, it's gonna work. That's what I'm scared of. I, I, I don't want my destiny determined by some creepy curse, but I like this. Yeah, so do I. What if it was never the blood moon? <laughs> And so they come back to reality and tell Tom and Jana that it worked and they're all like, yay, back to being besties. And I personally interpreted this as being one of those moments where you want something to be true and so you tell yourself and everybody that it is when deep down you know that it's not, nothing's really changed. Like that moment in the blood moon ball memory where she's like, what if it was never the blood moon? Like, ugh, oh, spoke volumes. Um, but we'll get more into that in chapter eight, which is the last chapter. So let's move on to that. So chapter eight is called It Was Never the Blood Moon because we are now post blood moon curse removal and let's be honest, these two fools are still in love. So Marco has decided that he's gotta go back to earth. He's gotta like get ready for college and be with his new baby sister and all of that. And Star reacts really awkwardly to all of this. And so this is clearly something that she hasn't really thought about until now. And so this results in Marco making a cape for her just like the one she made for him earlier in the episode that I didn't really talk about. But anyways, he's basically like, hey, listen, just because I'm gonna be gone and we're not gonna be like physically together doesn't mean we won't have time to go on adventures together. And they have a nice little moment on the roof and then the camera pans out and the like gems on their capes make a heart because I'm seven and these are the things I notice. And then her and Tom had this whole getaway trip planned but she ends up canceling on him saying that she just needs some time to figure things out. And so she goes back to earth to be with Marco. And then they're at the taco place and everyone just keeps thinking that they were gone for six months because Mariposa is their child. Special delivery from Star. What the heck? Baby. Cool. Star and Marco had a baby. No. Oh, and then also we see Jackie and her girlfriend and she gives Marco the advice on like not messing things up with Star. And then this brings us to beach day where we find out basically what I said before, but they end up having a blast at the beach and this old lady calls them a couple and then Marco helps her feel better near the end when she feels like the whole beach day thing was a complete lie. So then Tom and Star break up because Tom says that he wants to date his best friend and she's already got one of those and it ain't him. Um, and Marco is not upset by this whatsoever. He even says so. We've been trying to open portals all day. But apparently, we are both too emotional to do it. Well, I'm not upset at all. And then we have Tom basically giving Marco his blessing to date Star, and then he suddenly can't speak. Come on, dude. 
I think we both know that what you two have is something better than a curse. Guys, ah! I think we got it. What are you staring at? Uh, bye. Uh, uh. And I think you guys know what's coming next. Moving on to episode 18, the gang is all in the magic, trying to figure some stuff out. And while Marco is in this magic haze, he ends up making this confession to Star that she ends up hearing before the magic takes over. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to be, to be very small. And I want you, uh, I want you to put me in your pocket. And I want to stay there. And you can just reach in whenever you want and just pat me on the head. Because I love you, Star. What'd you just say? <laughs> what? And so as I'm sure you guys all remember, once you're in this like magic realm, you basically lose all grip on reality. And so Starfo starts showing their true feelings for each other and adopt a mini unicorn and start like having a family together and just being in love. And I really wish that they could have remembered this moment because it was just so good. You're fun. <laughs> you're fun too. I, I like, like you. you. Excuse me? I'm lost. Have you seen my family? I don't know where they went. No, I'm sorry. But maybe we can be your family. I'd like that. Then in episode 19, they have one of the best hugs, which like I know I've been saying that for like almost all of their hugs, but that's just because these two just have so many great hugs. Like, what can I say? Um, but this one's great in particular because she references what he says in the magic and it just, it kills me. <gasps> Marco! <laughs> Star, listen. Shh, 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 shh. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Let me listen to your heartbeat for just one minute. Oh, okay. I'm gonna keep you in my pocket from now on. What? But guess what else happens in episode 19? That's right, the pig goat scene. Ladies and gents, are you ready? Cause <laughs> I know I'm not, but we're gonna talk about it. So the two go to decompress from all that is going on in Muni right now. And Star says that she's actually happy that they have this chance alone together because she's been meaning to tell him that she remembers what he said in the magic. And Marco is just like, you know what? I don't even wanna know. Like that place was so weird. It was probably just like some fragment of my subconscious mind. Um, and I don't even wanna summarize the rest because the clip is just too good. So I'll let them do all the talking. Maybe it was just a fragment of your subconscious mind, but- No, it's, it's not a fragment of anything. That's the whole Marco. You know, the, the whole Blood Moon curse, that ordeal, well, it's, it's baloney. I felt like this since the beginning. I mean, I'm not a little boy. I, I know that you don't just fall in love at first sight. The way I feel has just gotten more intense since we first met, and it was intense at the start, and, and, I, and I know it's in the way. In the way? Marco, why does it have to be bad? It is bad if you don't want it. Okay, can we kiss? Uh, please. And so this all explains why the curse never really had an effect on them because the real moment when they fell in love was when they first met. And so the curse really didn't do much besides ship them, which like same. And listen, I know the whole trope of like, it's always been them from the start is just so overused, but it's so overused because it is just so good. And this is just a prime example as to why. But back to the story, because even though they are together now, we're not done yet. And so Star goes to Glossary's dimension to see if destroying the magic is the right thing to do. And so she sees her tapestry and sees that everything is good. And so she's like, great, gonna go destroy the magic until she realizes that Marco is missing from that tapestry. And I'm sorry, I don't wanna make you all cry, but just, she calls Marco her boyfriend in that moment, and so I just, I have to include it. Excuse me, excuse me, uh, you need to change this. My boyfriend, Marco, he is missing in this picture. Can you please just add him in there? Like, maybe holding my hand, or just. Star? It's just, he, he belongs with me. Star! What? I think the tapestry is done. So everybody goes back to their respective portals before they close forever, but then Star realizes what she's done and quickly goes back to try to get to the Earth portal so that she can be with Marco. But unfortunately, the portal has already been closed, and if you're not already crying from the last scene, um, let me just say that I'm sure this next one will get you. Enjoy! <laughs> the Earth well closed a while ago, but the kid's still here. Star? <gasps> Marco! What are you doing here? Well, I guess the same thing as you. Any idea what happens if we stay here? No, and I don't care. 
Because with or without magic, we belong together. And so it turns out just like the presence of Starko and their love, I guess, was strong enough to bring their two dimensions together. And so once they realize this, the show ends with them running to one another and saying hi. And just the thought of this mirror scene like makes me want to cry. I love it so much. I personally love the ending. I feel like it's perfect. And doing this video just reminded me how much I love the ending. I do wish we could have gotten just like a little bit more, like a little end credit scene or a little short film just like to kind of show what their lives are like now that the two worlds are joined to one. But I also just love the openness of it and how it's kind of like in the eye of the viewer to decide like what's next for them. And so that's the Starco story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed just taking this lovely walk down memory lane and reminding myself why I love these two so much. I went like full Starco stand mode this past week while making this video. Like I could not stop watching edits and just obsessing over them. And I'm really happy that that happened because it just reminded me why I love them so much and why they are just one of my favorite ships of all time. And so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said earlier, let me know down below which ship you'd like to see me cover next. I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways, Cater Tots, that is all I have to say for today. Hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye.